Howdy folks, coming back to you after our hard drive video. Now we're going to talk a little bit about network speeds and network testing. And one of the things that uh, I do want to point out, we talked a lot about different kinds of hardware interfaces. There's a lot of others. There's eSATA externals, there's Thunderbolt, there's mSATA. I, I could not have possibly covered every single kind of drive type. This is just to get you started. This is talking about being, becoming an IT professional. This is getting, getting you into the industry. Eventually, we'll start talking about raids. We'll start talking about configurations. We'll start talking about backups and different kinds of performances. But this is just to start giving you an understanding on where you should be and what you should be doing going forward. All right, let's talk about speed testing um, and how to troubleshoot network connectivity and if people are having a problem. So you've got multiple different kinds of network cables you've got multiple different kinds of network devices we're not going to go through all of that but we're going to touch on some things so we're going to go back to our favorite uh, website to explain and look up some of this stuff because there's just so much of it there we're going to go to amazon and ebay a lot because it's easy to find pictures and it's easy to find things to show you so first off let's talk about network communication speeds modern network communication speeds are 10, 100, and 1,000. And these are inside, this is not going to be a good picture for what we need. Maybe the Moker link will, I don't know. Uh, you see, so you can kind of see here where it's, you got a 1,000 uplink. Let me specifically search for 10, 100. There we go, 10, 100, 1000, Ethernet switch. All right, here we go. So your switches will tell you sometimes explicitly that it's detected a speed that is inappropriate. Um, let's find a net gear. This one will work. So over here you can see clearly, we're gonna use the zoom, uh, zoom magnifier, 100% default, zoom level. Magnifier, great. So you can see over here, we've got 1,100, 1,000, 10 and 100. So the original speeds of ethernet were 10 there are other standards thin net thick net there's there's we're not we're not going to get into those we're not going to get into you know talking about vampire taps we're talking about becoming a modern it technician that doesn't mean you're not going to run into old stuff you are going to run into old technology i have had to do vampire taps i have had to do coax installs but i haven't had to do them in years and years and years it's been maybe 15 years since I even had to touch that stuff. That stuff was old then. But, so we have 10 meg, 100 meg, and 1,000 1, meg, which is gigabit. These are the standards that you're typically going to need to know about. Let's exit this now. Uh, although maybe we'll worry about that later. Uh, and those by those standards, I mean up until the last eh, year or so, now we've got 2.5 gig, uh, and that's kind of broken us out into a multi-gig world. Before it was 10, 100, 1,000, and 10 gig. So there's 10 gig switches that are out there. 10 gig switch, right? Uh, so these do 10, 100, 1,000, and 10 gig, these you see can auto negotiate at 10 gig, 5 gig, 2.5 gig, 1 gig, 100, and they negotiate at 10. So the 10 gig is really expensive. You can see this is an eight port switch that does 10 gig. Even a five port switch that does 10 gig is expensive. That's why we see, we're seeing this resurgence um, and this, this adoption of 2.5 gig, uh, which is what the 
God PC. Let's pull this thing up again. Right? Uh, we're giving this away, remember. God 57 PC. This is, uh, this is it. Here we are. Uh, this has 2.5 gig, supports 2.5 gig RGB. Uh, sorry, RJ45, which is the physical standard of your Ethernet jack. Uh, so that is to give you more speed, more bandwidth, and more performance. But you need to have a cable that supports that. That cable is going to be a Cat6 cable. Cat6 Ethernet cable. Because a Cat6 Ethernet cable has speeds that support up to 10 gig, right? It says it right here, 10 gig Ethernet speeds, 10 gig Ethernet speeds. Cat6 does 10 gig. And Cat5e, which is because there's different versions, just like there's different versions of Cat6. Cat5e does up to one gig. You can get over one gig you can do all sorts of things. You can maybe push performances a little higher than you should. Uh, I don't know why this says both Cat6 and Cat5e. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's weird. 50 foot Ethernet. Anyway. Uh, I, uh, oof. Um, so you're typically going to get one gig out of Cat5e. You can get more. There are people on the internet that have managed to pull uh, more than a gig but it it you're just cat 5e 1 gig cat 5 is 100 meg so you shouldn't see cat 5 ethernet cables you should only see cat 5e ethernet cables even here when i'm searching specifically for cat 5 i'm not going to find it so if i have a cat 5 cable cuz it's all where the bottleneck is you're talking about performance if I have a 2.5 gig network card and I have a 2.5 gig switch and I have them plugged in with a one gig cable or worse, a 100 meg cable, I'm only going to get the maximum transfer speeds of that cable. So it's totally possible I have a 2.5 gig card, a 2.5 gig switch, and I could even have a 2.5 gig network connection. But if I have a cable that's 100 meg separating them, well then I'm going to have a problem with my network. And something else about networking cable, when we look at how a Cat5 cable is made, you need all eight of these. So this is your, your sheath that separates them for crosstalk and Tempest compliance and a whole bunch of other things, which we'll talk about at another time. Uh, there's eight little cables inside a Cat5 5, cat 5e, cat 6, cat, you know, the, all of these. Cat just stands for category, by the way. Uh, so you've got these. If all eight of these are terminated properly, that's when you can get the maximum speed. But if one is not terminated properly, you don't get the maximum speed. The maximum speed difference between cat 5e and cat 5 is one misplaced cable. If all eight of these cables are not properly punched down and terminated correctly on both ends, you lose one gig and you drop down to 100. Now, it's also funny because you can technically run two 100 meg pairs here. You just need to terminate them both on one, one cat 5e or one cat 6. I've seen so much electrical shenanigans and bad cabling shenanigans over the years. It's kind of funny. But you can test a network using programs called speed tests. Everybody's got one. Uh, even when I go to Google speed test to go find a speed test website, uh, Google has their own. And we're just gonna run one and we're just gonna, oh, this is what I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm running this. Now I'm running via Wi-Fi. But you can also see that I'm getting some pretty good Wi-Fi performance here. Uh, if I was in a network that said I had one gig a one gig switch a one gig networking card and i had a one gig internet connection but this was my internet speeds i would know that something is wrong and i would know something is wrong because 
I'm supposed to be getting a gig. Now, I would have to have a lot of bandwidth hammering me to push me down from one gig to 231 megs in a download scenario. Scenario. So, the problem here is that you need to make sure that you've got all of the pieces lined up. So it's totally possible. You get into a network, you've, you're trying to download Microsoft Office, you're trying to install a program, you're trying to manage something for a customer, and it's just running really slow on that machine. And so you just, you just go find a speed test company, and that speed test company is going to tell you, hey, this is not what you want. This is not what you want to be doing. And I'll let you run these other speed tests on your own. Speedtest.net is one. Uh, Fast.com's got one. Cloudflare, speed.cloudflare.com is one. We'll put all of the links to these in the chat. We'll uh, even run some, some run tests on them. Uh, try not to IP dox myself because security is going to be a conversation that we're going to get to really quick here. And making sure that these programs who literally will display my IP address um, on the screen, uh, sharing that on YouTube, just not good OPSEC, operational security, not a good idea. Don't do it. All right. So we've, we've had a very, very basic start in talking about network speeds and network communication and some ways that you can troubleshoot and you can tell, oh, hey, because if you've got 10 computers and nine of them all get nearly 900 meg per second, 900 up, 900 down, and you've got one computer that does it. Well, why doesn't that one computer have that problem? Well, that might be because of a speed test problem. And if you need to, you can IO perf it. We'll run some IO perf later. Uh, IO perf, although there's, apparently there's a link there saying why you should never run IO, iperf3 on Windows. Um, uh, I've used it to test up to the feedback and comments. Um, I've, I've used I, iperf3 to test 10 gig internet connections without an issue. Uh, it's a great program, especially for free. Uh, it helps you test inter interconnectivity between devices, between switches so when i determined that there was a computer remotely again this is remotely if you're on site you can look at the cable if you're not on site this is why we're doing this uh, you can tell oh hey this computer is the problem because you can load io perf on all the computers and you can have one be the server and everybody can talk to that server i should probably get some ms paint up here i'm gonna need to start uh running some paint and some drawings right uh, so we've got, you know, a server here, right? And we've got a whole bunch of other connections going out. So one, two, three, four. If we loaded IOPerf here on this machine and then ran the performance test to all of them, and this scored good, and this scored good, and this one scored good, and then this one scores 100, you know that there's something wrong with this cable. Uh, because there wasn't any wrong with these talking to this machine, but there's something wrong with this. So this could easily be a Cat5 cable that somebody pulled out of a closet or a drawer. They've been uh, stuffing it back in and pulling it back out and stuffing it back in. When I throw cables away, I make sure to cut the ends off them. So that's because the number of times I have worked with people and I will throw a mouse away or a keyboard away or a cable away and they will, and someone will come along and be like, oh, why is this keyboard here in the trash? Why do I need to worry? You know, I'm going to pick this up out of the trash. I'm going to, maybe this is a good keyboard. Maybe I need a backup keyboard. And then suddenly it's back in a circulation. And now you have to troubleshoot that keyboard a second time, determining that it's the problem. Destroy it. Make sure that it's not usable. Otherwise, it's going to, you're going to pull your hair out for other reasons. So a little bit of network troubleshooting. Very, very general little conversation about network speeds very very general simple things that you as a, a end user and technician need to know we'll go over some io we'll do some iperf tests live uh or not live but via recording uh and show show you how that works and what that looks like it's really just like a ping and as a matter of fact you could probably just go watch some other people other people have already done youtube videos go watch them go watch an iperf 
uh, video on how they're using it to test network speeds and bandwidth. Uh, and now that you understand what network speeds you should expect to see, 10, 100, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, 5 gig, 10 gig, you can also understand performance based on those things. A lot of times I've literally walked into places and I can just tell from the color codes on some of these switches uh, that these are not properly set up because sometimes a 10, and you can even see it right here. Oh, we light this up, right? I'm gonna, gonna have to, again, attach magnifier, just pin it to the taskbar, right? So I can load it up, right? You can see it right here. That yellow will be a 100 meg or a 10 meg and green is one gig. So when you have, and you've got yellow PoE fault and PoE powered, so even these tell you, hey, there's issues with the power PoE that I'm pushing. We'll talk about PoE later. Um, that I'm pushing to those devices, but I'm, I'm only running, hey man, I'm yellow. I'm only running at 10 or 100, and I'm running at one gig. Like all the rest of them are running at one gig. Maybe that could be a UPS device, an uninterrupted, uninterrupted power supply. That's what UPS stands for. Um, which is just a battery backup. Some people call it a battery backup. And you need to have some sort of visibility on that, understanding that, oh, hey, that's a 100 meg network device because the transmission speeds that it puts out are so un unimportant. It's never going to hit 100 meg. It's not even going to come close. But here we go. So some very basic networking uh, understanding, some very basic uh, network troubleshooting, very, very basic on speeds. This is just to get us started so we can start having other conversations.